The Biden administration has decided to open up more oil and gas drilling leases. When Biden took office last year, he closed all those down, right? So why the change of heart? Is it because, do you think that it's because there is so much corporate interest inside Washington that took him to task, that lost out when he decided that he was going to cancel all of these leases? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, President Biden made all of these campaign promises about the environment about the environment many of them of course he's failed to keep and by the way many of these these campaign promises that president biden made um could have been uh carried through or executed by executive order with the stroke of a pen he doesn't even need congress to enact almost all of his big campaign promises by the way um with a simple executive action could be upheld yet he's failed to do so and one of these big campaign promises centers around greenhouse gas emissions the carbon footprint the environment specifically and specifically he told bernie supporters by the way like come on and vote for me because i'm the environmental president i'll like, do gonna, what you hoped bernie would do right i'm going to carry the torch for the environment and I'm not going to absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not open up additional oil drilling uh, in the Gulf and any sort of additional federal lands to oil and, and, and gas drilling. But here you go. Right. Um, just last week in the newsletter, we featured a story that 14 of the biggest 25 oil and gas companies or utility companies inside the United States are actively lobbying against climate change, right? Only five of them were acting for, on behalf to, for more policies that prevent climate change. The rest of them were fairly neutral, but a full 14 are working <laughs> against changing their business model in order to save the planet. And that's allowed. That is yeah. right in line with the policy that we just talked about, right? So recall this sort of, like, let's just do a, a brief walk through history. When Biden was on the campaign trail, he promised the moon when it came to climate change. He admitted that it is the biggest crisis facing humanity right now. But when he took office, then he canceled all of those drilling leases. But then a federal judge later reinstated those leases. And then the administration went on to open up more leases in the Gulf of Mexico, literally just days after the president got back from the Paris climate. Uh, no, not the Paris, the G. The G7. Uh, no, yeah. the, the climate conference that he went to in the fall last year, around yeah. November time, um, the one in, in Europe. So, you know, what about the environment? Well, I don't know. They're saying that we, you know, we have an oil crisis. Gas is expensive. Well, so what about what I, it? But the federal government is also giving itself in opening up these new la leases a sweet little raise because the royalty rate on these leases goes from 12.5% to 18.75%. These are royalties to the federal government. So in terms of like lobbying and money, Mother Nature did not offer a better deal. So she doesn't get a say. Well, it's I think it's let's just kind of cut to the heart of all of this, which is like what President Biden is saying is that, you know, because we've got high gas prices, they're scrambling right now. They're like, you know, we've got high gas prices so where we open up the strategic national oil reserves to lower gas prices. OK, um, we are uh, going to allow this additional drilling to lower gas prices because this is Putin's price hike. If anyone watch, if you have a brain, you know that that's a total lie that opening up these opening up these additional oil drilling um, lands would not reap any kind of rewards for years to come. So it's a total lie. Come on, man. I'm sorry. It's the truth, Joe. But it absolutely is. So this garbage, you want to like get up there on the podium and pretend that you're doing everything you can to lower uh, oil uh, oil prices, but it's already going down. So oil prices, as yes. we've shown over the past four weeks, has already been going down. So this is all political theater. Is he, you know, just taking lobbying money? Are they just from the oil and gas well, industry? Well, I mean, look at this six percent royalty rate change. They're they're giving the federal government is giving itself a raise right. for for the something that. So had had he kept the leases in place. 
when he took office, they would have only made 12 percent, right? But canceling them and then reinstating them at a new rate, they gave themselves a 6 percent raise. You know, and his boss, former President uh, Barack Obama, was, you know, going to be the environmental president. And yet he is the president that opened up the Gulf oil drilling, the deep water drilling, yes. which, of course, was not uh, did not have the proper safety standards in place. And he kowtowed to political pressure. You know, you had uh, what's her name, Sarah Palin at the time saying, drill, baby, drill, drill as much as you can. And so what did Biden, what did Obama do? He absolutely went along with it, even though he said he wasn't going to. And then he opened up deep water drilling. So you you can blame what happened we with the Gulf oil spill on Barack Obama. Uh, lack of oversight. And then, of course, seafood devastated in that region. Um, and that's been covered up and hidden. And we still are dealing with the repercussions of what happened yes. with the Exxon Valdez. Um, so this is not something you can just sweep away. I mean, ask the people, ask, ask the people who run businesses in those regions uh, of the Gulf, like how have they really been affected? And they're still finding all sorts of... Uh, fossil fuels inside of these uh, wildlife yes, it's killed awful. off tens of thousands of dolphins. I mean, the list is endless uh, how bad this has been for the environment. But go ahead, political posture all you want. And I think it's because he's grasping at straws right now because his administration is going down in flames. And this weekend, we had this unbelievable video on CNN. This is, I mean, I, I can't believe that I, I would actually say that this is CNN that did this segment. But CNN did a segment on President Biden's approval rating and how President Biden's approval rating is at the lowest in history for any U.S. president at this point in his presidency. Like and people who are, uh, you know, anti-Trump are going to be like, God, oh, this is this is crazy. But this is CNN actually doing this reporting. Watch. I want you to look. These numbers kind of differ. They range from the low 30s to the low 40s. Low 40s is not good either. But what's key is. The lowest are tied for the low for the pollster. Lowest here, lowest here. This is one point off the lowest, lowest here. And when you have three or four pollsters showing the lowest numbers for the president of the United States, that is indicative of a president who's in a lot of trouble, at least to where he has standed historically. Well, let's talk about history here. How does Joe Biden, President Biden, compare to former President Trump in this stage of the presidency? You know, there was always that thing. Oh, Donald Trump has the lowest approval rating at this point in his presidency. We did it over and over and over and over again. Well, at this point in his presidency, Donald Trump's numbers actually his average approval rating is one point higher than Joe Biden's, which is at 41 percent, Donald Trump at 42 percent. A first term president at this point in his presidency, uh, this is the lowest. This is the lowest for anyone who was elected to the presidency and didn't get up there through the vice presidency. This is a really, really, really bad number. Wow. Like, <laughs> can you imagine the people at CNN like sitting there like in the control booth like, oh, my God, we got to stop. Are we saying this? We got to stop this segment because, man, he's our guy. You know, Biden's our guy, you know, at CNN. And of course, they went they did wall to wall coverage of how President Trump hit at the at the time, you know, lowest approval rating of any president yes. at this point. They, I mean, you heard it nonstop. Well, he says in that video, we covered this nonstop yeah. about Trump. And he admits. And the other guy's like, well, let's keep that on the, let's, let, do, is it time for your lunch break? How can we help him? But by the way, I mean, you look at this. So he's, the Biden administration right now is doing anything it can to save face. I mean, you know, there's a couple of things I did a video recently. I mean, there's a couple of things they could do, which is to uh, open up and legalize cannabis, um, move that forward. The House just passed that last week. Like, get off your ass and actually pass something that could bring in record revenue of, you know, in, in, in tax revenue. Um, give an enormous number of new jobs to Americans um, in that sector. If he just, with the strike, strike of a pen, he could do that. Um, student loan debt. There's so many things that this president could have done that he hasn't, and he's in deep shit. I mean, he's going to lose this election. Democrats are about to get their asses handed to them. In the Noam Chomsky piece that we discussed earlier in the show, he does say when Trump reassumes power, he will do these things, um, which were not good things, right? But he doesn't have any faith in Biden doing good things. He doesn't think any of them will. He talks about how every leader in the United States has been basically a warmonger and out for blood and a sociopath and it's hard to, it's kind of hard to argue with him about that but he does fully predict that trump will be back in power and uh woof it's gonna be murder this next election is gonna be murder guys buckle your seatbelt. it's coming that year off yeah yeah i'm, I'm gonna do what grover's doing 
Yep. Like just we'll sleep through that year because it's going to be absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal.